quite a few 18 have actually asked me why I haven't reacted to the YouTube fan fest yet and they're really curious and they want to see my reactions to it so thank you for the people who have requested to it one of the main reasons why I haven't reacted to the YouTube fan fest is because Mana made me feel really uncomfortable 18 viewers worldwide who have been following my channel you would have seen my video on Mana when it first came out you know my stance on that and I link that back to Jezebel days when the people of Israel were led by their kings into satanism and occultism which ended up in God having to destroy that land and finally kicking all of the people out of there and once again just seeing Mana Nango here being performed made me really sad when I first posted the Mana reaction video when Paxibo came out a lot of 18 commented below in the section saying oh it's probably just an international translation thing where because you're not Filipino you don't really understand Tagalog and mana can actually mean a lot of things it can mean inheritance and it can also mean the mana nango demon vampire and in this case we're believing that it's more like we have a lot of gifts in mana so don't sleep on us and i accept that there is that interpretation because as a lyricist as you're putting your feelings into words a lot of times you have a lot of meanings that you want to capture as well but what made me really sad is to see not only the lyrics refer to a demon vampire of filipino folklore but to then see that here in the choreography that makes me very very sad because what does light have to do with darkness what does the people of god have to do with anything that has to be involved in satanism and occultism on one hand you might say well it's just a folklore it's not real but it is real because if it's not real when i say the word mananango you shouldn't know what it is that thing exists it's not physically but it exists in everybody's imagination and everybody's mindset and that's the bit that i want to capture here that not a lot of people talk about what is spiritism these days in 2021 sure in the past the israelites actually had shrines that they worship all of these demons on today in the more modern part of the world at least i hope it doesn't happen but it takes another form it takes the form of music videos lyrics favorite idols portraying certain stories that you are then led to believe and the spirits that affected the Israelites so many years ago to the point where God had to throw them out of the land those demonic spirits are still living right now that's the bit that we have to recognize you can't see them they don't have a face these demonic spirits are very much alive and they now take the shape and form of anime characters costumes and depictions lyrics or even the intention to put that into music and we've got to really face ourselves and face reality to acknowledge that this is what's happening where humans have bought into a scam that we keep repeating and replaying and replaying and eventually it is going to cause our downfall this is in genesis chapter 6 and i'm reading from the cjb version in time when men became to multiply on earth and daughters were born to them the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were attractive and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose adonai said my spirit will not live in human beings forever for they too are flesh therefore their lifespan is to be 120 years the nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them these were the ancient heroes the men of renown adonai saw that the people on earth were very wicked verse 5 and that all the imaginings of their hearts were always of evil only and adonai regretted that he had made humankind on the earth and it grieved his heart Adonai said I will wipe out humankind whom I have created from the whole earth and not only human beings but animals, creeping things, birds in the air for I regret that I ever made them but Noah found grace in the sight of Adonai Noah, as we know then, him and his family and all the creatures he took with him was the only ones who survived the Noah's flood because without understanding this context you have no idea how sad i feel when i see sb19 perform mana and the earliest 
interpretation of this Bible, to read it in context of its meaning, has always been the sons of God, meaning angels. And they were in such lust after them that they conspired within themselves that all of them are going to come down to the earth and make those women their wives. Now, angels do not marry, not by design, but these angels decide to go against their design, how God has created them, and come down to do such an evil thing. Verse 4, it says, the Nephilim were on earth in those days. If you look up the word Nephilim, first thing that it will explain to you is that these then became giants. So it's not that the angel itself became a giant, but the offspring of the hybrid angel and human being became a giant. And this is such an evil in God's eyes because God said, let every kind each to their own kind. There's no mixing. Humans and animals should not have sexual relationships with each other. Monkeys and fishes should not have sexual relationships with each other. Humans and goats should not have sexual relationships with each other. Each to their own kind. This is God's design. This is his law. So when the angels who decide to corrupt themselves came down, and had this hybrid thing, you come up with something that is a monster, quite literally. The angels now who first came, they taught the daughters of men how to use iron to make weapons to kill each other, how to enlarge their eyes and put out makeup, and participate in occultism where they keep having these orgies, where they have forced sex, where they abort the babies, and ate their flesh and made each other eat each other's flesh. In one place, it refers to them as the biters, like biters, like vampire biters. Doesn't that sound like the Mananangal? And so if you and I just check it in our hearts ourselves, and if you have ever, ever felt a strange attraction to anything like that, vampires, witchcraft, even violence in sex, fetishes, a lot of people using those sex toys that are chokers, things that tie people up in bondage. All these came from all of these evil angels and their offsprings, which caused God to grieve so badly because all they could do every single day is think about sex and how to hurt each other, not he healthy sexual relations between a man and a woman that God put together for good, for the procreation of society, but an evil one where people are forced, people are raped. Humans like you and me, Zaka, we cry out to the Lord in Hebrew. Lord, I can't take this anymore. There's all this violence and all this suffering and all this bloodshed. They took my kids and they they drank its blood. They took my fiance and raped her. Cause enough is enough. I'm gonna have to send the flood to wipe off the whole world. And only the only righteous family, Noah, you and your family can stay. The others are going. So now when you look at the rainbow, you should understand why God put that there. God put that there as a sign that yes, he will not destroy the earth again, but what happened to the point where he had to intervene and now when we look at the rainbow again, we should remember that core of our heart. If God was in the room right now with you, would you show him this and completely out of your conscience say that nothing here would make him angry? That would be everything here he says he would like. Like this, especially this part. Pablo, what are you doing? Justin, what are you doing? So if a song is supposed to glorify God at the same time and talk about how much gifts he's given you, and on the next scene, you're doing this soul-sucking thing, which is it? Is it the one or the other? Why are you wavering between two grounds? It's the same question Joshua asked the Israelites. It's the same question. Moses asked when he took them out of Egypt, I present before you life and blessings, death and curses. 
they're both in part of the same covenant of God that God gave to Moses back then. And in Jesus, in Yeshua, he gave us the new covenant, which is the fulfillment of that. Life and blessings or death and woes, curses. Which is it? Do you want to serve God? Or do you want to take everybody down to hell with you? If you disobey God. That is something that every Christian, not just SB19, me, you, everybody has to answer for ourselves. But I want to specifically talk to the SB19 members and also 18 who have large influence and large followers on your social media at the moment. Do you know that everyone's watching your every single move? Not only you, but the angels, both the good angels and the bad angels that are trying to steer you astray. I once heard a sermon. It said that Satan has an investment. And you wonder what he invests in. Does he invest in stocks and bonds and shares? No. He invests in human souls. When you're very young age, he puts a little seed in there. Just a little one. In your heart. To turn you against God. And he will bring you to different parts of life. And especially for people in the entertainment industry, it happens again and again and again and again. As well as for pastors. Have you ever wondered about Catholic priests and so many accounts of them raping the parishes? Church pastors of mega churches embezzling funds. Artists who started out Christian, but halfway through they changed their God and served the devil instead and bring the whole audience and whole viewership, all of the fans down the same path of idolatry as them. Still, you should know better. Ken, you're a missionary's grandkid. Your grandfather is a pastor. You should know better. Justin, what are you doing here? You who on station head the other day told the 18 to pray before they go to sleep, yet you do these things? Does the Holy Spirit not convict you of sin? Josh, have you become an idol now? Because the commandments say, first of all, I am the Lord your God. Before me, you shall not have any other idols, not any other gods. Have you elevated yourself to take the place of God who gave you the talents to bring you out of your struggles this far? The spiritual trajectory of SB19. Is it gonna head down just the same direction as all of the rest of the K-pop industry, P-pop industry? Is it? Because if that was the case, then what is the point of God sponsoring you? What is the point of God giving you these talents when you are just gonna cause people to fall away and lose their salvation? What can it profit you if a man gains the whole world but lose his soul. You know these verses. They're not new to you. How have you taken heed though? How have you listened? I really feel like I'm not the first person to tell you guys these actually. I feel like in your life recently, or maybe a while back now, you've had voices, people whom you're close to tell you these things but maybe you haven't listened. It's good that it comes from me, a stranger, a passerby, who tells you all the things that you need to know. When I used to turn away from God and I came back, Psalm 119.59 has
has been a motto, a slogan that I keep on to for the rest of my life. And I want to share that with you. It says, I thought about my ways and turned my feet towards your instruction. I hurry. I don't delay to observe and follow your laws. 